But good morning, uh, Joe Spampanato here from Corporate Data and Voice Solutions. Uh, again, thank you for joining our Tech Talks Live with Zoom and 5.9. So we're going to uh, kick it off here. So a huge, huge and uh, big thank you to our sponsors, uh, Zoom and 5.9. Today, we're going to have uh, Kim Irish from Zoom presenting, as well as Oren, from, uh, Oren Wentworth from 5.9 presenting. And uh, you'll be hearing from them shortly. Uh, quick agenda. Uh, we're going to. Uh, I have a few things to say here for the first uh, five to ten minutes. Uh, then we'll turn it over to Zoom. Uh, Oren will uh, present the five nine uh, information, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, wrap up with uh, qu you know, questions and and some final uh, thoughts, as well as uh, a couple of raffle prizes. We'll be uh, we'll be presenting at the end. We do have a few people in, uh, in attendance from CDVS, folks, uh, names that you probably uh, look familiar if you've been seeing the invites going out. Um, so they, uh, they can chat uh, a hello when they get a moment, but uh, we have uh, Manny Spampanato, Kelly Kucher, Rachel Neri, Pete Lankart, and Christy Sturgeon on with us here. couple of housekeeping uh, items. Your audio is automatically muted and video is off. Uh, that's by design. We are recording this session, so we will be following up with a, a link to the session that you can, if you uh, need to review some information or forward that uh, information or recording along to uh, fellow workers, uh, you'll be able to do that. Uh, like I said, uh, we will be drawing two uh, $50 e-gift cards at the end and you must be uh, in attendance to win. Questions are encouraged during the presentations. Please type them in the Q&A. And Ashley, I have that correct, right? We're gonna use the Q&A and not the chat function for the questions. Yeah, if you guys could do that, that would be great. In the Q&A box in the middle of uh, the bottom of the platform. Excellent, thank you for confirming that. Uh, each qualifying question will be asked, uh, I'm sorry, question asked will receive an additional chance to win. Uh, a raffle prize, and you must be present to win, and you can only win once. Uh, who, for the folks that uh, don't know us, uh, several of you do. I can I know the names here that are popping up here, but uh, for the folks that don't know us, um, Corporate Data and Voice, uh, CDVS as we go by, uh, founded in 2003 with a focus on the converged network, right? Bring, bringing more uh, applications to the, the network. Uh, we take a consultative approach here, helping custom, customers improve communications, both internally and externally. That's our claim to fame in, in this world. Uh, we act as an extension of, uh, of your team, your, the, our customer's team, with a high touch. Of course, with COVID, we're not actually touching these days, but uh, a high touch approach. Uh, project planning, implementation, ongoing support. Again, we are part, we, we make our, ourselves a part of uh, as much a part of your team as you'd like us to. We have an extremely high customer retention rate. We're very proud of that. We're passionate about what we do uh, and how we execute. And our pillars of how we do business, honesty, integrity, and accountability. Uh, why we host our Tech Talks Live series. Um, CDVS had a long tradition of hosting lunch and learns uh, in the region. Um, and unfortunately, with uh, with COVID, we we had to uh, we had to make some slight adjustments. So we've been doing these Tech Talk Live series, uh, either monthly or bi-monthly, um, and we'll continue to do this until we can start doing uh, live events again. Uh, we definitely have a strong reputation for educating our clients and prospects on both current and emerging technologies and, and trends. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the pandemic forced us to, to change things up a little bit, uh, but we do definitely look forward to resuming in-person events in the near future. We'll pause uh, real quick, and I'm going to launch the first poll for today. So if you guys could take a second and just respond um, to the question, we've got a few of these baked into the presentation, um, just to get some feedback from you guys and to make it a little bit more interactive. So if you guys could go ahead and respond real quickly. Uh, 
Awesome. Fantastic, guys. So it looks like everyone is in agreement that um, that resellers like CDBS can offer, offer um, value um, when evaluating technology solutions. So thank you for that. Excellent. Thank you. Kim, can you? Perfect. Thank you. All right. And now for our feature presentation. So we're going to turn it over to, uh, to Kim. You um, actually, if you want to run the next poll, that would be great before we get into things. Perfect. So if you guys wouldn't mind responding to these real quickly, um, we just want to get kind of a pulse check on who's already using Zoom meetings today so we can have um, a level of understanding of what your familiarity with Zoom is. And also try and get a pulse check on what your existing phone system looks like before we go into a deep dive on Zoom phone. Awesome, thanks for that. It looks like a lot of you are already familiar with meetings, which is great. So this should really resonate with um, all of you. So with that, we'll let Kim go ahead and get us kicked off. Great. So yeah, if you have meetings, you're um, probably trying to set some strategies. We've learned a lot over the last year and you're probably trying to figure out how you can be a little bit more flexible in the applications you have uh, for your users and then also that flexibility that you can have uh, with your customers. You're not alone. Um, a lot of customers like yourself are looking at ways that they can be a lot more flexible and reduce the number of applications that they have uh, that their users are using and that they're managing. Uh, Zoom is more than meetings. We are a platform. Um, I am a Zoom phone specialist. So um, the, the meat of what we're going to talk about today is Zoom phone and how you can add that into your RA meetings environment and try to um, you know, get a little bit more return on that investment that you're using with meetings. So one application, one experience for chat, video, phone, uh, meetings, webinar, all of that uh, with Zoom. The top reasons that customers like yourselves are making the switch to Zoom phone um, easy deployment. It's already in the application that your users know, so it makes it uh, great and uh, fast to deploy and a uh, high adoption rate. The management for Zoom phone is in the portal that you're already using for meetings, so um, all the moves, ads, changes are right there. Uh, you can use the dashboard that you're probably using for meetings as well to look at your Zoom uh, ecosystem, including phone. The mobility that you get uh, with Zoom phone, uh, right in that meetings application, once again, that desktop application, that mobile app makes it super flexible for your uh, users to be able to be anywhere and still be connected. Really lowers your total cost of ownership, right? So being able to get more out of that application that once again, uh, you know so well and your users know so well. And then the quality and reliability you know, everything that we do from the base uh, is with video. We built this architecture uh, to be super reliable uh, for video. And then with phone, that reliability comes along with that. So being able to connect from anywhere, once again, um, being able to use the mobile app, being able to use the uh, desktop application and supporting phones, right? So we, you know, you've learned a lot over the last year and being able to be flexible and your users can be more flexible. So uh, sometimes that application is becoming more the forefront than uh, the phone, but truly being able to move through any type of connectivity with Zoom phone, uh, we can support that as well. This is a great video that shows our true platform at play. So I wanna take a moment to play this. It is uh, very worthwhile. Hey guys, I wanna share with you a couple of features that we rolled out that makes it super easy for you to manage calls and meetings across all your different devices. Let's see this example where I get a call from Katiana. Hey Katiana, can you hold real quick? So I'm gonna put Katiana on hold transfer this call to my mobile device, and I could see it shows up right on my Zoom mobile app. So I'm going to pick up the call here. Okay, I'm finding a room right now. The cool thing about this is it just picks up the nearest available room, and I can walk right in. And now I bring my call into a Zoom room. Just find my room, click it, and it's easy as that. Hey, Katiana, how's it going? Hey, it's good. Let's get on video. Can I share something with you real quick? Yeah, sure. So I was thinking 
about moving number eight and number nine? Do you think that will work? Yeah, it looks okay. totally good to me. So I love that, right? Because it shows the true flexibility that you get with uh, Zoom, being able to move through all the different applications that uh, your users have. So Zoom phone, fairly, right? You're, uh, this is a new conversation. Everybody knows us for meetings, not so much for phone. So let's talk about some of the things that we've done in the last couple of years with Zoom phone. Over 400 features and capabilities. Because it's all Zoom and we started in the cloud, we can be very fast to market, very innovative, very quickly. Uh, over 40, uh, excuse me, we're in 47 countries with native Zoom phone. So that means you can port your numbers over or we can provide numbers in those countries. We uh, are serving customers from Main Street America to the Fortune One. And so that 1400 is just representative of companies that are 1,000 employees uh, and higher that are moving to Zoom phone. And the uh, growth that we have experienced in the last two and a half years where the actual Zoom phone product has been out, um, we've sold 2 million uh, Zoom phone seats in 10 quarters. So when we look at the competition and the market, customers like yourself are, are setting a strategy. So we would encourage you to reach out to your rep at CDVS to discuss uh, Zoom phone if you're starting to set a Zoom strategy. Uh, we do support uh, devices. You saw in the video that Esther was able to move from an, a desk uh, device into uh, their mo her mobile app. So uh, we support audio codes, Yaylink, Poly devices, some Cisco uh, phones. Uh, if you need an eFax solution, we uh, work with Faxipit and we have a nice integration coming out into our application uh, with Faxipit. So once again, keeping the experience right within the Zoom application. Um, and then if you have a, a need to do any kind of bring your own carrier or you want to do uh, maybe a phased deployment with your premise uh, PBX, we can support that through SBCs. So this is gonna be a nice lead into uh, our next conversation with Oren. Uh, Zoom phone and true UCAS uh, spirit, right? Does have some, some key um, call center light functionality, right? We call it call queuing, uh, otherwise known pretty basically in the, in the market as hunt group. So we have simultaneous ring, round robin, uh, top down, longest idle. So some you know, basic call treatment. We have call barge, monitor, whisper, um, auto recording, and we do have SMS into our call queue. So if somebody call, you don't just have to have that audio into a call queue, you can uh, have SMS as well with us. And then we do have uh, real time and historical call analytics. But Five Nines is a great partner for some of the uh, omni-channel needs that you might have, any skills-based routing, any callback. So, um, you know, we're going to have Oren get into that a little bit more here in a few minutes. Well, I want to make sure that um, if you have some of the basic uh, call center requirements, absolutely make sure you reach out to your CDVS rep uh, and see uh, what uh, Zoom phone can do for you from that perspective. So let's uh, hand it off to Oren. I know, Ashley, you have a poll that you want to do to yep. see. So um, we're going to pause for just a second because we did get a question in chat around Zoom phone capabilities. Um, the question was, do you support any ATEX supported DECT phone like Cisco 8821? Uh, yeah, so I'll need to look up the 8821. Um, we do support the 7800 and 8800 series Cisco phones if they have the third party software support on them. So let me get the link to the uh, to the hardware that we support here uh, as Warren's talking and I'll put it in chat for more information on that. Perfect. Um, I actually have it already, so I just sent it in oh, chat. Of you so. do, Ashley. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I appreciate that. You're such a great... A great teammate, I appreciate it. The the link that I just shared shows all Zoom phone compatible um, hardware. So um, we'll, we'll look into that specific model for you, but you can go to that website and see all of the um, compatible hardware. Um, and and we, got a second, we got a second question. Do you support auto attendant call routing for income? Yes, yes, we do have auto attendant. Um, so the, what you would expect out of the basic um, auto attendant, we uh, support, uh, you know, working hours, holiday hours, 
um, how calls are treated after hours. So yes, uh, the things that you'd expect an auto attendant uh, call routing for incoming calls, we do support that. Thanks for the questions. All right, well, with that, um, I will go ahead and we're gonna turn it over to Oren, but before we get started, we're gonna launch a quick poll to get a quick pulse check and see who actually has an existing contact center today. So if you guys wouldn't mind answering that for us, and then um, we'll move to the contact center side of the house with 5-9. All right, Ashley, give me the cue whenever you're ready to rock here. Perfect. Yeah, I was just waiting to get some more responses, but it looks like um, a little more than half of you, which is great. So with that, um, we will go ahead and get this party started on the 5-9 side of the house. Cool. Thank you guys for the introduction. And and um, half the people have context and I love it. And, you know, it's, it's funny because that um, poll effectively can be a trick question in the sense that a lot of people have contact centers and don't know it, right? Um, they can take a lot of different shape. There's a lot of different ways that um, companies are using the same tools that they've traditionally used, but uh, getting more revenue streams and so forth out of it. So again, my name is Warren. I work closely with the CVDS team, closely with the Zoom team, uh, cover the Northeast here. So uh, I'm going to try to run through this. I wish I had some cool videos like Kim does, but I don't. So I'm going to try to keep it a little more, um, a little more, I'm going to try to keep it lively with the slides. But uh, so look at, from the five nine side of the house, you know, um, it's a really a nice a nice marriage between us and Zoom, right? As far as UC goes, they're our number one go to pretty much all the time. Um, so, oftentimes that it comes out where customers want the sort of full package; they want one delivery arm, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we can provide that experience in the sense that um, the integrations are all there. Right now, it's going to be essentially two different contracts and things like that, but. From an integration standpoint, passing calls back and forth, a lot of the all the technological functionality stuff that people commonly are asking for in these sort of like one throat to choke type of ideas is really where it all ex excels. But from the from the contact center side of the house, so when we take that, um, you know, a little bit further, we're seeing oftentimes that you know customers are spending more and more and more money on contact center and looking for it as a revenue driver rather than sort of a cost a cost center, right? And what we're talking about here is the fact that the first time, uh, if you want to go to the next slide, uh, the first time that customers are interacting with agents um, and a company is oftentimes through the website or through a call or through, uh, they're not walking into brick and mortar stores like they used to, right? I mean, yeah, sure, that stuff is going to come back eventually and, and, and whatnot. But, um, you know, when, when you think about when you think about the younger generation and so forth, people are trying to do stuff quicker, right? They're trying to access it on their phone. They're trying to access it on a website. They're trying to get their order taken care of. They don't want to talk to people. So we really kind of call that, we kind of coined that phrase, the customer experience. And then, you know, our simple math problem here is if you can fix the customer experience problem um, or, or, or give the customers a happy customer experience, it's also going to translate down to the agent experience, right? So what's the often, you know, if you think about a context in our agent, that's a thankless job, right? I mean, at the same, it, most of the time they're getting yelled at. Nobody calls in to tell them how great of a job they're doing. Everybody's calling in to tell them, hey, look, my order's, my order's not on time. My computer's not working, you know, whatever it may be. But if you can enhance that customer experience, you can provide that really top-notch customer service. When they call in, those questions are going to be more like, hey, look, um, you know, I, I want to order more, right? I want to do, uh, hey, Mr. Customer, um, I saw that you ordered, the one that we use a lot of time is like Solo Stove, right? I ordered Solo Stove. So, well, hey, look, we work with this company over here that can provide wood subscriptions. What if you could, you know, add this subscription to your plan, right? So this is kind of like predictive stuff. So a lot of the, the bottom line is that really becomes one cohesive experience, right? And that's a lot of buzzwords and stuff there. But just think of it as if you can fix this exterior problem and make the customer experience so good, the Asian experience so good that all of a sudden that flows downstream and people start and you start to see this as more of a revenue generating service. So um, actually you driving next one. Um, so what are we talking about when we talk about contact center? Um, yeah, sure. The, the cubicle farms of, you know, hundreds of thousands of cubes in like in the movies still exist. Um, you know, those are sort of moving away a little bit, I would say, but 
the contact center really kind of covers, you know, everything from voice, video, email, mobile, social media, listening, stuff like that. Um, SMS, all the same, you know, transactions that you, you think of today, right? So just to give a quick anecdote, um, Teladoc Health is one of our customers, right? And we've used them, everybody's, I don't know, I've used them quite a bit, uh, especially over the last year. And you think about that transaction. So when you when you fire up a Teladoc Health, you put, your, you put in your insurance number, you get this video powered chat. And then um, afterwards they follow up with a conference, with an email, they follow up with an SMS saying, hey, look, is this, your prescription is ready. It's at CVS down the street. That whole interaction sort of cradle to grave is powered by 5.9, right? So that's really kind of what we're talking about here in the sense that um, you can sort of compound a bunch of these different channels. Uh, and again, it plays really nice when you start to look at the full solution, but by all means, um, from a voice perspective, we can absolutely solve for, you know, your traditional, hey, look, I got 20 agents, I need 20 agents to sit there and I just need them to be, you know, more proactive or I need better reporting or I need better, you know, different ways for them to answer chats. That stuff is all, all available. Oftentimes when you're having that conversation, there's just a whole bunch of other stuff to look for um, that 5.9 can kind of position for you. So um, it, go back one. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, and that kind of plays into what I was just talking about in the sense that oftentimes customers grow with us, right? So voice is usually sort of the entry point um, and phone is the entry point into a contact center, be it inbound or outbound, right? We do a lot in the outbound world too. So <clears throat> oftentimes we'll start with the phone and then customers over time will migrate to our different technologies, right? So effectively we start to look into some, you know, a CRM integration or workforce optimization or some sort of different workflow stuff. Um, the social media stuff is really cool. Um, how many companies are actually using it? Not that many, but are there plans to do it? And is it gonna become more popular in the future? Absolutely. And just, it's sort of a future proofing type of uh, technology that we offer out of the gate. So when we talk about this kind of stuff, um, understand that it's sort of a, a, a fluid a fluid process post-sale, right? We want to make sure that A, the, the deployment and everything is really good, but we also want to, um, you know, grow the customer and, and meet the needs as, as things evolve as well too. So next one. And with that said, you know, um, oftentimes I think this kind of plays to the Zoom, the Zoom world too, right? Where, where everything's all about kind of making the customer happy and the rest of the stuff takes care of itself. Um, I think that's really kind of what we're, we're built on, right? People ask kind of what's, what's your big differentiator between all you and all your competitors? Like I could get into bits and bytes and speeds and feeds, but at the end of the day, it's all about deployment and support and things like that, right? When you call, you actually talk to somebody, you talk to somebody in America, you have a conversation with them. Um, they know your, they know your, uh, deployment. We hire very experienced people, right? Our average tenure is four or five years, right? At five, nine for deployment services. So not all, not no two contact centers are the same, right? It's a very complicated process. The CVDS team is really good at this too. They've seen it a thousand times. They know exactly what to look for. They know the questions to ask. They know what the, what the project managers and so forth they're gonna ask moving forward. So just understand that when you um, do select 5.9 as a, as, as a contact center provider, that um, effectively this, this, the sale is only sort of day one, right? The rest of this stuff all happens after, after the sale and that, um, you know, support, deployment, NPS, all that kind of stuff is, is really, you know, if you read our statements and stuff, it's all around NPS. So just keep in mind that, um, you know, this, this is certainly something that we focus on very, very heavily. The next one. Uh, and just real quick. So um, I think this is my last one. From a use case perspective, um, we're talking a lot about IVA, right? Um, interactive voice response or IVR. In this scenario, what that really means is think about Amazon Alexa, right? Rather than when you call into a call center, so the, the, the traditional way of approaching a call center is I have 50 agents, I need 50 licenses per se, right? Well, maybe you don't need 50. Maybe you don't need 50 licenses. Maybe you only need 20 licenses. And then you put this sort of, you know, IVR on top of it, right? So rather than calling into your bank and you get presented with your, you know, traditional hike, push one for sales, push two for this, push three for this, uh, or what would you like to do today? That kind of agent experience. What if you could just say, hi, thanks for calling, you know, Newburyport Bank. Um, how can I help you today? Right. And you could just say, I want to apply for a loan. Boom. You get routed to the loan, the loan management team. Right. That's what's called an IVA or an IVR. Sort of same thing. 
um, we're, we're, we're seeing a lot of companies really adopting that technology, right? And again, it's, it's, it's a human capital thing where in the sense that you have, you know, a million agents, you can have them doing other stuff, proactive stuff and have the IVR, you know, deflect a lot of the inbound calls. So in this Pizza Hut scenario here, this is a franchise location, but um, when you call into the, when you call into the Pizza Hut location, uh, it says, hi, how can I, you know, hi, thank you for calling Pizza Hut. Uh, we see you're from, you know, the, the Salem store. Um, we have all your information here. How can we help you today? Well, my, you know, um, I didn't get my shipment of, of, of dough. I'm just making this up a little bit, but uh, I didn't get my shipment of dough. Okay, boom. Let me, route you, let me route you to the right person, right? Rather than having the, okay, push one for sales or push two for, you know, franchise support or something along those lines. You can really sort of enhance, again, this all places in the customer experience um, component if you can put that stuff in front. So again, Pizza Hut was, is just one of the many examples where, where customers are starting to adopt this technology. Um, and again, it's, it's sort of a fraction of the cost of, of what, you know, a full-blown agent and, um, you know, whole solution costs. So I think that's my last one. But yeah, so again, on the five nine side, it's a lot of information to squeeze into 15 minutes, but uh, hopefully drove it home. And again, you know, Zoom is one of our great partners. So is CVDS. This is, you know, these guys are all speaking from experience. So, um, you know, let us know how we can help. Um, so with that, we will go ahead and launch um, the final poll just to give CDVS an idea of um, who they should be following up with. Um, so if you guys wouldn't mind responding to this one real quickly. I just launched it and let us know if you'd be interested in additional information um, with regards to Zoom phone and or 5.9, we'd greatly appreciate it. And if you have any additional questions that we haven't answered already, feel free to um, go ahead and throw those up there now and we'll walk, walk through those. Fantastic. It looks like everyone's responded. So with that, I will go ahead and hand the floor back over to Joe to wrap us up. All right, great. Thank you. Uh, so before we, uh, we get into raffles, uh, any, <clears throat> any last questions from, from, uh, from the folks that are on with us today uh, that we can get answered while we're here? Ashley, I don't see any. Do you see any? Nope, I don't see any in chat or Q and A, so I think we're good. Unless I do one final call, any any outstanding questions? Nope, I think we're good. Thanks, Joe. All right, great. So as as promised, we will be doing a drawing. Uh, actually, two. We'll draw two names. Uh, each uh, each name will be receiving an e gift card for fifty dollars. So uh, we have Derek Brandt. So I believe I see Derek still on. Derek, if you want to chat, uh, chat hello, so we can confirm you're still with us. Do we see his? I will. Uh, I'll pick another one. Carl Fortune. So Carl. I believe you're still on here with us. So I see Carl, thank you very much, Carl. Congratulations. Um, excellent. And is Derek on with us? I didn't see a response from Derek. Well, panelists, what do you think we should do? I don't see a response. Yeah, Go to the next. All right, sorry. <clears throat> All right, so sorry about that, Derek. But uh, Carl, I picked your name again, but I cannot pick your name again. So hold on one second. Uh, Rob, Rob McMullen. I believe I saw Rob still on. Hey, Rob, congratulations. There you go. Excellent. So we have our, uh, we're all winners, but uh, we have our two specific winners too. 
Excellent. Well, uh, thank you very much. I, I want to say thank you for uh, for the for the Zoom folks and uh, and Oren over at Five Nine. Uh, fantastic job. Uh, obviously, given given a little information uh, to uh, to tease us there. So please follow up with us uh, for the folks that are have attended. Uh, we will you'll be hearing from us again at least with uh, you know the recording for the um, for the session here today. Thank you very much for attending. Hope you have a great day, a great rest of your day, and uh, look forward to you uh, joining us on uh, some future Tech Talks Live. So thank you very much, everyone. Appreciate it.